Hey everyone, it's Eric Goins from Flywheel Studio here. We have not been making many videos recently, so I want to take some time today and make the start of a quick tutorial on how to integrate SUPA Base and Adala. One of the most common questions we get as an agency is uh, using external collections. Um, and a lot of people are familiar with Adalo's native databases. We use those a lot. A lot of people really like Airtable. That's kind of like the entryway to using external data storage. Um, but eventually, if you're building large, scalable applications, um, especially those that have significant amounts of data, you're going to begin looking at external storage. And there's kind of the most, the most popular and common one that everyone in app development, specifically app development knows, is Firebase. That was a startup, Google bought them. It's part of the Google ecosystem now. It is by far the most popular um, external um, data storage tool there is um, for mobile applications. And uh, we, I will I will eventually, a long time from now, make a video on how to do this integration. It is very similar to this with a few key differences. But one program we really like is Suppabase, which is an open source alternative to Firebase. And the reason we like Suppabase is very easy. It is a SQL database, which is more familiar to me. And I have a lot more comfort and um, uh, skills using it. And my team does as well. So Suppabase is a Postgres SQL database. It handles authentication and it has APIs that we can call and in, in, um, interact with in Adala. There are a lot of pros to this. There are some cons. I'm gonna try and cover those throughout this. Um, in this video series is probably gonna be three videos, I think. So we're gonna start the integration process. I wanna kind of show you the basics of getting these set up on each platform. And then in another video, we'll do some integration stuff, okay? The thing is, I'm not gonna cover how to use Adalo in this really, and I'm also definitely not gonna cover how to use Suppabase. There's two different videos out there for those, um, you know, and, and the respective communities are great. So. If this feels like we're skipping a lot of stuff, you should probably go learn the respective platform where, where you're getting confused, okay? So first things first though, you're gonna need to start a project and get signed up on Suppabase. I have already done that, so I'm gonna skip ahead and just go to my test project here. And the second thing you need to do is you need to create a mobile app on Adalo, all right? So, we're just going to create a dummy test app here. All right, and this is going to be SUPA base test. And the first thing you need to change, there's gonna be a lot of little things that you're going to need to tweak. So this is the first one. In your account, you need to have it set up that you are a developer, okay? Before you get to this, if you go here, click on the icon, there is an option to turn yourself into developer mode. You need to do that in advance. And then you go to advanced options and you can do the use external users database and authentication beta program, okay? And then we can create our app. And that will take us to the Adalo's um, uh, setup process here. So I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller. And Adalo has um, some things here. They've got a YouTube video on how to get this set up. All right, so definitely watch that. They have some docs here that are helpful, but we're gonna go through these one by one. Now, the way this works is Adalo is calling Suppabase and passing information back and forth when a user signs in and when a user um, when a user signs up and when a user logs in, and you're going to store two pieces of information about that user. The first one is the user's ID, and then the second one is the user's authentication token, which you're going to need to call um, the API. This is the standard form for API calls in Adalo. If you're taking this, hopefully you are familiar with custom actions. It's going to be very important Again, I'm not gonna cover API calls in this. Um, so some of this might seem a little bit fast. 
But the first thing we need to do is because the login setup comes before sign up, you need to have a confirmed user in your app when you get started. Okay. And that kind of poses a problem here because uh, Suffabase will not actually let you just go in and create a user. All right, you can invite somebody, but you cannot change their password from this. So what we're gonna have to do is actually create a user manually, and I use Postman for this. So let's get started on that. The first thing we wanna do is go to our authentication settings, all right? And we need to turn off email com uh, confirmations. The reason for that is, is that we do not uh, have a website that we can redirect an email login link to. So just turn that off. The second thing we're going to do is go down to our API here. And Suffabase does a great job with this where they will build all of our API docs for us. And that makes it super easy to use. If you're not familiar with Postman, again, that's probably kind of like a separate thing, but it's very easy to use. So what you do is in user management, you're gonna come in here to sign up and you're going to want to unhide the anonymous key, okay? And what we're going to do is we're gonna, if you're not familiar with Postman, okay, it's a way to call APIs. So I've just created a request in here. I'm going to take this sign up link Okay, I'm gonna put it in here and I'm going to change this to a post call, all right? See this post here, this is the link. And the first thing we need is a header denoted by the H, okay, for the API key. So we'll go to headers, API key, and I will paste that value in there. And then we're going to do the content type is application JSON, that's another header, okay. All right, and now we need to put in our body, all right. You'll notice I'm copying and pasting some of these, some of this I already know, you just don't wanna get these brackets on the outside. It will do that for you. So we're gonna change the mode, the uh, format to raw, okay? And we're going to create a dummy user account, okay? All right, ultra secure. We're gonna send this request. And what we're doing is we're signing up a user. I mean, it seems silly, but that's exactly what we've done. And we're gonna get back this response here with all kinds of information for that user, okay? So we've got their token, we've got their ID, all of that. And what we can do is we can go into our authentication area in here where our users are stored and we can see that user that we just signed up. So 24B8, and we can go in and see that they were just signed up here, okay? That's it for Postman. That's the only thing we have to do here. It's a silly little step to kind of get ahead of a dollar. So let's close this out. And we're gonna go back to our API settings here. And we're gonna now go through our login form. So let's go back to user management. Bash, okay, we're not using JavaScript. And I'm gonna show the Anon key because it's easier for me. And we're gonna do the login with password process, okay? So first, this is our base URL, okay? And the method is post, again, denoted from here. And then we have the API key. Okay. So we need to put in our headers. So the first header is going to be API key. And the second one is going to be a content type application JSON. Okay.
Now we need to pass in two inputs. The first one is going to be that user's email address. So we, we're going to use our example value of user at email.com, the account we just created. In order for mo mo most platforms for an API call to work, you actually have to have some valid response. So that's why we're doing this. Um, so that's email and then password, which was also password. And now we need to enter the body. This should look exactly the same as the sign up. Okay. We'll just paste that here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our magic text. To capture those two inputs. Okay. If you leave this, I mean, you could hard code it, but I mean, obviously that that would just break the next time you wanted to use it. So you have to use the magic text to make it dynamic. And we're going to click next. And voila, our test was successful. And we can see the response here. Now, Adalo captures two pieces of information about a user when they log in and when they sign up. And actually, neither of them are the password or the email address. We're capturing the user's ID which is in our system, okay? If we go back here, this is the user's ID, and we're going to collect the authentication token. So let's put in the access token here. You can see that here, that is the auth token. And then we need the user ID. Now we're going to repeat this exact same process for the sign up. And this is the same thing we just did in Postman, but we're going to do it again in Adalo and we will sign a user up. So here's our sign up link. Okay. So off the one sign up. And that is a post call. First header is the API key. Which is kind of hidden for me here, but there we go. And the next one is going to be that app content type application JSON. Again, we're going to add two inputs. So the first one is going to be email. And we need to test this, but remember, we but we can't use the one that we logged in with um, because we need a new account to come back as valid. Um, and if we use that other one, it will fail. So I've just incremented that to be user one. And we'll do a password. Now let's get that JSON body from here. And let's put in our magic text. And we had a successful test. You can see the full result is here. And we're going to save the same two things that were returned, so the access token and the user ID. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird. When you get to user collection, it's going to tell you this. Um, there is no next. I mean, this is in beta, so I don't really know what um, what is going on here. But if you save and finish later, that is actually complete. In the next video, what we will do is start creating some screens and actually have some actions between um, Supabase and Adala. So look out for that.